done while we had a quorum. So, um, Jeff, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, councillors, uh, it's my pleasure to be able to represent the board of RFA uh, for this presentation. Just to confirm the delegation here, um, we've got Chris Brooks, our CEO, Brian Monk, who's our acting CFO, and Jonathan Wilkin, who's our head of strategy. Um, the presentation that you've got uh, was given to you some time ago. We've now got a, a visual presentation to frame the, um, uh, the discussion today. And what I wanted to do, just in the interest of time, was quickly go through some of the uh, material here, uh, but concentrate uh, on two uh, aspects. One is a series of uh, comparatives, uh, comparisons that we've done uh, specifically at the request of councillors in past presentations to try and give you a feel for where RFA sits when compared with uh, comparable organisations in Australasia in a range of different matrices. Uh, and secondly, there are some elements in terms of our financial reporting that I want to try and highlight as well. Uh, just so that you're up to date uh, with the way we are tracking at the moment. What I'm going to do is just quickly go through uh, these initial uh, presentations. Um, the intention of the first slide is to amplify for you uh, just what penetration RFA has with the Auckland public in terms of measuring uh, what activities have been undertaken, uh, the uh, several hundreds of thousands of attendees uh, in Auckland who participate, uh, the visitor spend of 20 million plus that has been associated with the events that we've been undertaking, and the uh, city GDP contribution that um, uh, tracks uh, through from that. Um, in the period that we're talking about, uh, RFA has delivered 256 commercial events across its uh, venue, so it's been a fairly busy uh, period for us. Now, in typical fashion, I'm trying to make the technology work, and given my ignorance of that, it's not doing it. Um, there it is now. Could be a battery, um, Jeff. It, well, it could be my battery as well, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. But if we come on to uh, we come on to the second uh, of the slides, we continue uh, the information that we hope gives councillors insight uh, into the contribution that this organisation is making. Uh, we've got cultural well-being measured in a range of different ways here, uh, but when you look at those numbers, they are in anybody's language a significant addition to the fabric of this city's community. You look at what the, the zoo is delivering in terms of uh, subsidised entries. Um, overall, three, almost 350,000 subsidised entries uh, for Aucklanders to the various uh, venues that we, uh, that we, are, uh, uh, we are managing. I'm not going to spend a great deal more time I know uh, on this particular point, I know councillors have really asked in the past for uh, some insight into just exactly what value we are able to deliver for the budget that you pay us. And this is where you start to see a distinct and um, you know, very tangible uh, payoff, if I can use that uh, phrase, for that uh, support. When I began, I talked about comparisons, and the next... Um, there it is there. The next uh, slide is the one that I particularly wanted to take uh, councillors to, because to date, I don't think that you've really had the ability to hone in on uh, how RFA stacks up uh, when compared with others both in New Zealand and in Australia. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see the names of 30 institutions, both in New Zealand and Australia, whose information has been mined in order to provide comparisons of the 
key ways in which we achieve our outcomes by comparison with them. So if we go through here, there, there are a few very telling statistics that emerge. Oh, if you good. look at what it costs to run RFA's institutions by comparison with these 30 Australasian uh, institutions on a cost per visitor basis. RFA uh, costs this city $20.74 per visitor. The average across Australasia of those 30 organisations on the information that we've been able to obtain is $33.81. In terms of that efficiency, a pretty good margin, I would have thought. We've looked at how we deliver in terms of our staffing costs uh, by comparison with the Australasian average of those 30 organisations. And if you look at it in terms of a per $100,000 visitor uh, ratio, we've got 18 uh, staff members per 100,000 uh, visitors compared with the Australasian average of 26. A measure I would suggest to you of the leanness and the efficiency of the organisation uh, in terms of its ability to deliver per employee. In terms of what we attract, um, it, it, the third of those uh, comparisons is interesting as well. If you look at what, uh, what percentage of our local uh, visitors uh, come into our venues. It's 20% compared with an average of 24. Sorry, 28% compared with an average of 24. Uh, again, just a mark of the penetration that we're, we're managing to achieve with our local uh, catchment. We also perform. If you're uh, if you're looking particularly at uh, the uh, the performing arts, we also deliver uh, a great deal many a great deal more uh, performing arts uh, events per 10,000 local residents than the Australasian uh, average, 8.3 compared with 4.9. And lastly, just as, a, uh, as a, a measure of the way in which we are working our venues compared with the Australasian experience, if you take Mount Smart as an example, We've put through 183 events in Mount Smart compared with 28 as an Australasian average. Now, that is a measure of a couple of things. Firstly, it's a measure of the fact that there's a huge amount of what goes into Mount Smart and others of our venues that is not just high-end sport, it is local directed uh, sporting activity, and that's not necessarily the case uh, in the larger uh, facilities in Australasia. Uh, but it also tracks into a range of consequences because if we're working our venues hard, as this indicates, uh, then uh, we obviously need to see that we are maintaining them properly uh, and giving them the right useful life that uh, the community demands. So I wanted to particularly take you through that comparison uh, because I know that it's something that a number of councillors have both in this uh, forum and in discussions with members of uh, my board in other circumstances asked for. Um, we, we are planning to continue this uh, and to develop it so that we have both in terms of the organisation insight into how we're doing but we can offer that uh, to you as, uh, as well. What I'm going to do now uh, is uh, pass. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we we hoped that it would actually give you insight uh, that you've been asking for. Um, what I would like to do now is quickly take the opportunity to pass to my left uh, to Mr. Monk, who I was very happy to see got a glowing. Uh, recommendation from the water care delegation um, uh, for him just to step you quickly through uh, the financial material and then we can perhaps come back to a couple of points that emerge from that uh, as we update you on where our financial position is. Thank you uh, Jeff. So in terms of RFA's overall performance at the end of April so we have focused here on more recent information than was available 
in uh, your own handout. Um, the bottom line is that our cost to operate at 31 mil is just fractionally better than the agreed funding by council for that period. So we have on the following slides a breakdown by individual business unit. I won't go into those in too much detail, but if you look at them as you go through, uh, there may be questions that emerge from them for you. And maybe if we've got the... Yeah, no, I'm sure Councillor Walker is appreciated with the, with the um, breakdown of the individual... And, and, and the, oh, well, <laughs> there'll be no questions from you then. <laughs> so, um, I guess being new to this business, one of the things that did interest me is the individual costs of the various activities and what they cost uh, Auckland ratepayers to, uh, to subsidise for the activities they have. But I was also interested to see that Auckland Conventions, as a business unit, actually generates income. And we're going backwards, but it's going forward. So yeah, maybe, no, Mr. Seek, if you can... So, Auckland Conventions. Uh, so, it was budgeted to generate 4.4 .4 million uh, during the period through to April, and, and it has achieved that. In total, we are running shy of our revenue forecast by over $3 million. What we've done to date is to be able to offset that by cost sa savings across the, the group uh, in order to maintain our bottom line position with council funding. Next one. Where do you want to go, Brian? Maybe if we uh, move on to capital expenditure, I think would be the answer, but we can field any questions later that you may have on individual business units. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep. I'll um, step in here, if that's okay, Mr Chair. Um, so, as, as of the end of quarter three, um, we, as you can see, we have delivered uh, this, well, I should just frame this as this is our um, uh, the largest capital um, program this year that RFA has had in its history, as at um, as at um, the end of quarter three, we delivered only up to 72% of what we were aiming to deliver up to that point. There's been several programs that have slid out just a little bit, um, although um, much of that will be recovered in the final quarter. So we are forecasting. Um, against an overall budget for the year of 121 million, um, delivery of um, just over 96 million dollars worth of capital, so um, around about 80 per cent of what we were we were programmed in. The remaining um, uh, 24, 25 million dollars worth of capital um, is all um, already contracted and and um, and indeed is related to programs that are underway, but that there has been some phasing shift. And these are largely um, driven by the larger projects that we are, um, are undertaking, the most substantive of those, and these are over several years. There's, of course, the AITIA refurbishment project, which um, everyone is aware is, is somewhat of a troubled project for us and has slipped considerably. Um, and then secondly, the, the Auckland Zoo, um, Precinct, Southeast Asian Precinct development. Again, the largest development in its history. That project is is in very good state. Um, there's within the um, 30 to 32 month program. There's been a little bit of movement about when the the um, timing of the most intensive construction work is happening. But um, but essentially, that's all on time and on um, on budget. Um, so that will be in time for the, the new elephant. I'm sorry. 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 That's a couldn't comment. Please keep going. Look, we've got to lighten things up at times. Yes. So there's um so overall um the the program, if we move to the next slide, there's just a couple more highlights that um I'm trying. I think we're Incapable, are they? Um, just a few more um, 
highlights, but overall the, the capital program for this year included over 200 projects, mostly small, um, but as I said, several large ones, and these are some of the more significant um, of those projects. Um, Mr Chairman, uh, I'll ask uh, Chris if he would uh, deal with uh, our contributions to Māori outcomes um, and uh, sustainability and climate change I'll pick up. And then I'd like to bring you back to uh, one aspect of the financial performance, which I think we need to, uh, to deal with as well. Uh, thanks, Jeff, and good after afternoon. Um, look, I think, comment, we, we're continuing to um, try to deliver as many Maori outcomes as, as we can. I think we can, we can always do more. Um, we're doing a lot now in sort of uh, Toreo and uh, signage across the dual signage across our business and uh, the refurbishment of the AAT Centre. We've got dual signage operating through there. Um, I think one of the exciting things is going to be the Lisa Rihanna uh, commissioning that we're putting into the ART Centre, which will go in uh, later this later this calendar year, and I think that'll be uh, just a superb uh, exhibition that we'll be have ongoing in the ART Centre. Um, and look, we can just continuing to work through all our staff um, and that, and working with uh, Manafana or wherever we can to try and uh, increase the level of activity across uh, across all our venues and uh, and programs. If, if I move now, sorry, to the next slide. Um, we've had for some time in parts of the business a really strong focus on sort of our sustainability and, uh, and climate change. Um, we were delighted recently that we had a group of, uh, uh, of young students from the university who came to our public meetings to talk about climate change and, and the desire for, the, for things to change in the city and what their view was and what needed to be happen, to happen from a climate change perspective. Um, look, we've adopted a number of those things as part of our SOI, and uh, the board yesterday adopted a policy in terms of uh, sustainability and, and climate change. We have achieved zero carbon at the zoo, and our intention is to try and uh, achieve zero carbon across all, across all our venues. We've got some, got some work to do. Um, the first of all, to try and set a baseline uh, mm. across our venues, which is the, the first part of the work that we'll need, need to undertake. We're working in terms of how we can eliminate the single use of plastics and uh, the zoo's just moved away from uh, takeaway coffee cups now to, uh, to uh, um, st uh, stainless, Jonathan, stainless steel yes, coffee indeed. cups yep. um, where people pay a deposit and get that money back when they, when they return it or they can reuse it. Um, we're trying to, uh, uh, we've previously moved away from, uh, from uh, the sale of uh, plastic water bottles there so people take their, their own containers for, uh, for water. And we're looking at how, particularly around our events, we can start to reduce the amount of waste and how we can sort of look to run the zero waste events over time. So this is really important to us from uh, for both from our staff perspective. It's important to us from uh, from a user's perspective and clearly from a customer perspective, perspective as well that we continue to work on this. Uh, we've also done quite a bit of work on water conservation at the zoo, um, just again to reduce you know, the amount of water that we're using um, and recycle as much water and reuse that as, uh, as much as we possibly can. So we've got a really strong program that we're working through and targets that, that we're setting over, over the, next, uh, the next few years. So I'll go back to Jeff. Um, Mr Chairman, if I can just pick up uh, the point that Chris mentioned. In my uh, six years as a director of RFA, I have seldom uh, attended a public board meeting that was more positive and more helpful uh, and uplifting, frankly, than our most recent uh, meeting where this delegation of young people from Auckland University attended. They, I think they came to us with some trepidation that they were going to be you know, meeting a, a, a bit of a wall of silence. Uh, and they made a submission that was uh, very direct, uh, very well thought out, uh, moderate, uh, when in this area sometimes you hear things that are not so moderate, um, and uh, very positively received as a result. And it's really very uh, heartening for us to be able to say, as we are in terms of our dealings with these people, because we are writing back to them, uh, to say to them what it is we took out of their presentation, what it is that we are now adopting in terms of real-time 
targets for achieving greater sustainability over time. And councillors will begin to see that sort of thing. For example, when we uh, bring back to you our SOI, you will see uh, statements in that dealing with this in a much more direct and pointed way than the generalities that might otherwise have been there. So I just wanted to, to reflect that as a, you know, a very positive uh, recent development that we have, uh, that we have seen. Um, in terms of perhaps a final comment before questions, I wanted to take you back uh, to, and I hope I can get you there, to our finances page and just draw to your attention a, a couple of points that have uh, been moving on. That's this one here. Yep. Now, in the materials, I think, that came to uh, Council uh, uh, before this presentation, there was a reference to our position uh, tracking negatively against expectations uh, to the tune, I think, of about uh, $250,000. Um, you'll see here that we were forecasting a negative variance of 500,000. Uh, I have to front the fact that that figure uh, is going to be on the light side for a variety of reasons, which I'm very happy to go into. But at the moment, we are looking at a negative variance for the year that is likely to land somewhere between 900 and $950,000. Now, as I say, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, some on the uh, income side, where we've seen income uh, delayed. For example, the warhorse uh, uh, production has been delayed by a full month, and that revenue, therefore, has not been available for this year. Uh, on uh, the other side of things, there have been instances where costs have uh, either uh, fallen into the year where they could perhaps be accrued and spread over time, or costs have uh, simply been larger than uh, were projected. In one instance, uh, there has been, I think, uh, an underestimation of what the current year costs associated with uh, heightened security, particularly after the Christchurch atrocity, uh, has meant for us. Council has taken that on board and looked to uh, budget for that with us in the coming year, but the cost uh, that has fallen on us uh, in the current period uh, is something that we uh, that we're having to take into account. So I wanted to be open and to yep. be clear that unfortunately the material that you've got there is out of date. We still don't have a complete handle on where these numbers have uh, moved adversely, uh, but uh, we've identified, I would expect, probably about 80% of the movements that are uh, relevant to this, and we'll tie the rest down very, very shortly. Uh, it's certainly a brighter picture than it was looking last time you reported, so. And we are aware that we, we, we had to be a little bit more parsimonious to you regards grants for security, so. Uh, mm. We're very happy to answer any questions uh, I, anyone has. I just do want confirmation because there's been more and more media speculation about Speedway. Can you confirm the status of the Speedway contract at uh, Western Springs, please? Um, so the Speedway contract between us and Springs has been executed for... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a venue hire agreement. It's executed for one, for one more year. Yep. Thank so. you. Right, we have Councillor Hills, Walker and then Filipina. Um, thank you for those figures on the comparisons because they get thrown around all the time around what we should and shouldn't be doing where but isn't the ma also the main difference of the amount of community um either free or low low cost events and programs and which i think we should be doing but isn't that part of the reason why you aren't making huge profits or anything from the stadiums and it's because we direct you to do as much community as possible but you still have to staff I think that's inevitably part of uh, part of the mix, yes, Councillor. I mean, it is. Uh, it's no. Uh, it's no happenstance that RFA is set up as a charitable trust. It's the one CCO that is established in that way, and that is a reflection of the fact that we have both uh, commercial 
expectations, but essentially expectations that are, that are directed towards achieving public good. Uh, and so there's an, uh, a very distinct element of public good and uh, community involvement that is at the heart of whatever we do. And just the last thing, while the um, construction's going on, are we going to kind of reconfigure the zoo expectations for, for a little while, or do you think you kind of got them right? Because every year it's kind of, we're kind of undercook it or over... Uh, I, I think that's a, a very good point, and one of the one of the factors in the adverse movement is to do with uh, the impact of construction at the zoo. No doubt about that. Uh, we've responded to that in a in a market sense already, and for much of the last year, our pricing at the zoo has been reduced specifically because we know that the offering to families, particularly there, is, is not as attractive as it will be when this fantastic uh, project comes on stream. Uh, but that's one of the things that has affected us. My last comment, um, Chair. The, just on that zoo pricing, so I don't think you've... Um, I think it's promoted at the start, but it's kind of trailed off. Every now and then I kind of pump it up again through my networks, but I don't know if people really know how big some of the discounts are at the moment for the zoo, which still has a really good offering. I just don't think, even if it was just a Facebook or a, or a sending out to all the members or a re kind of, you know, it doesn't need to be a lot of money spent on advertising because then you lose the money. But um, I just don't think, especially coming into spring maybe, that people realise how cheap the zoo is now compared to usual. Um, so it's just, I think you expect people to know that or remember that, but I don't, they might have thought it was a one-month thing or something. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, very helpful feedback, and we'll take that on board. And, and Council, we are about to go out with another members' campaign as well, so that will pick up those around that. Councillor Walker. Well, I'll just raise another thing. Don't need a response right now. It's just fine. Um, so, first off, um, commendations on the great work that you're doing at the zoo, OK, around sustainability. That's marvellous. Um, it would be very constructive to report on that in some detail because it would be wonderful if other organisations picked up on what you're doing. I mean, obviously, the um, the separation at source that leads to um, the zero waste is incredibly commendable and not too many people are doing that, not too many organisations are doing that. Um, I pose a question to you around the international charge at the art gallery. Obviously, patronage is down. Whether or not there's a relationship, I don't know, but quite obviously that's of um, concern. I note that the um, Speedway contract has been executed. That's the venue hire arrangement. But my understanding is that there's a drop in utilisation on the part of um, Speedway and certainly a preference on their part to have a higher... Um, level of utilisation. I don't need an answer to that now, but quite obviously if uh, the utilisation isn't there for uh, other events, if their utilisation can be uh, maximised, that's great. And part of the background to that is my understanding that the venue development strategy has been um, put off, so not too much happening there. The other um, issue that I've raised before is a... Um, a better breakdown across asset classes and stadiums and uh, zoo and the like that goes to issues around carbon and sustainability, but it also goes to financial um, management um, and calls on our part to um, invest or not in, um, in areas. Um, so I welcome some information on that um, later. That's, that's all for me. OK, so no urgency on anything there. So we're going to go to um, Councillor Filipino. Uh, thank you, Chair. The first question is around the war horse and the month delay. Does that mean that the season for the war horse has been extended by another month because of the month delay? That, that's right, Councillor. The, the, the issue in terms of its effect on our finances is a timing issue only. No, that, that, that's good. At least there, there's, there's a, 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 an income there that would not have happened in that uh, extended month. Um, look, my, my other question is around, and, and Chris, this is aimed at you, 
Oh, hold on, that, that's a bad word. Chris, this is directed at you. Um, plus, plus also those um, in, in the RFA team. Now, Wayne Donnelly ended up mentioning how Penny Hulse was getting threatened over social media. Um, there was a word, um, and that was coward, was mentioned to the person who, who was, and I totally agree that this particular person is a coward. But I also know that yourself personally and others, uh, whether it be on the board or staff, have also been threatened, which, um, which necessitated security. I would like to get any comments from you around how that felt from a personal perspective, not only from you, but also from your family. Um, so, Councillor, we went, we went through a period uh, a couple of months ago uh, whereby myself, the chairman, and uh, one of my direct staff was uh, threatened through social uh, through um, social media. Um, we got PwC involved from a forensic aspect to uh, do some work on that, and their their advice out of that was to uh, go to uh, to the police and also to put security on our residences, which we did for a period. Uh, that since has stopped, and that but. We were aware where that, where that uh, was coming from, and uh, so we, we think we dealt with it in an appropriate way. But it was certainly, uh, um, um, the targeting was very direct. Um, supplementary uh, through you, Chair. Now, in your slides, uh, bottom left, uh, slide number four and slide number five, number four mentioned the RFA institutions have three, uh, well, th third fewer staff. And number five slide you've got in there is staff recruitment freeze. Now, Chris, I remember um, a few years ago with uh, your presentation coming here that you mentioned about the staff and the pressure that got applied to RFA and other CCOs uh, around cutting staff because, you know, look, we need to save um, for the budget. And, and, and I recall you saying that uh, the staff that were then there had to uh, end up working um, one and a half people's job uh, to, to get through now. Um, can I suggest that uh, health and safety, there was, um, it mentioned in water care, I think around the health and safety of their staff. Um, and, and, you know, that they end up making sure that you know, the mental health and everything else. So can, can, I, can I suggest that and ask that uh, a piece in your presentation uh, includes health and safety around your staff? Because, look, uh, the pressure is still being applied. Um, and, and, I mean, I need to make sure that the people around not only this table but others uh, are accountable for the pressure that gets applied uh, to yourselves and other CCOs. So that's, that's really my... My, my request, but look, I'd, I'd love a comment back. Thank you. Um, Councillor, I, I will uh, make a comment. Uh, I chair the risk committee for RFA, which takes into account health and safety, uh, and the issues that you've touched on about the mental health of our staff is a, uh, that's an issue that is front of mind for all of us on the board, um, uh, because there are pressures of all sorts of types that uh, people need to deal with. Um, I think it's a, a fact that we do ask our people to work hard. I think, though, that by and large, we have a very committed team who are happy to put what is required in to do the job well. Whenever, whenever within our business units we see stresses and strains, there is no question but that that's to be responded to. You can't allow people to become ill or um, you know, overwrought in terms of the, the work that they have to do. But I think what you see in terms of the numbers here uh, is that we simply do things pretty darn well. Uh, and if you look at teams like those within Auckland Live uh, who consistently bring into the city really good uh, productions and presentations and do it with promoters in a way where even they would say we are so much more efficient than our colleagues in Melbourne or in Sydney or in Perth. 
Um, the, the, the benefit that you see there in terms of efficiencies is a real one. It's not one that necessarily comes at the cost of our staff's uh, health. If that was to begin to emerge, and I will be honest enough in saying from time to time you do see stresses and strains amongst people, then we move to try and, and deal with that. Chair, can just request of you to the, the other CCOs. Uh, there, there was only really the one which was uh, uh, water care that had the health and safety and, and about their staff. Can I suggest that you relay to the other CCOs that it's important we have a uh, health and safety component in any of the, the quarter um, reports back? Uh, because I think it's just, just it's important then. Um, just, just, just one last, last thing is, 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 is just around that, is, is to, to ensure, I think, um, look, it, 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 it's just really concerns. Kathy, Councillor Casey mentioned it when we were going through the, um, you, you mentioned it here around the threats and everything else, but when you end up getting the threat that was aimed at Auckland Transport, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's just getting so prevalent, it's just getting disgusting. So, you know, some, somehow we just need to end up having a look at it. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so, um, Sandra's noted that. We will pass that on because there's no question it's just become a bit of a disease, a viral disease. And, um, and as we're all noting, it's getting particularly nasty against the female councillors and female staff. And uh, this is not just a councillor thing. It could be um, people... In our dog section, uh, it could be people in the park section dealing with carry dieback and, and um, tracks that are shut down. And um, needless to say, it could be Hanua, 1080. I mean, there's three or four things where there's no question things are getting out of control and it seems to be coming, by and large, from a dissatisfied, disgruntled male predominant group. So. We will note that, and, we'll, and I think that's a very good point to bring up and to add to the, the quarterly reports. Um, I, I have Councillor Casey, Darby, and then Cooper, but you need to go, Linda. Well, yeah. Yep. You go. No, no. You go. But the, I mean, there's also, I've noticed, a female councillor liking some of those comments on Facebook, which is pretty disgusting and other councillors cheering it on. So, you know, we all need to look at ourselves. My question was around sustainability. How do you um, reconcile the sustainability issue with um, allowing fossil f um, fuel burning vehicles to go round and round in circles needlessly for no point um, at Western Springs? I just don't understand, and I'm sure Councillor Walker would be very concerned about that because he's very concerned about that sort of thing. Um, Mr Chairman, I'm happy just to respond personally and to say to the councillor the irony of that has not been lost on me. Thank you. OK, councillor Casey, and we won't pursue that last comment um, in committee. Um, I don't have a question about an elephant, but I do have a question. Yep. No. Um, I think the AOT centre refurbishment is fantastic. I just wonder what feedback you've had since it opened its doors. And I also just want to see how great it is to have the box back. I didn't realise I'd missed the box so much. It's when I meet people and have meetings and all that. And my third question is, are people stealing the reusable wine glasses? Because that's what I heard, that they're walking out the door. Um, yeah, I think we are losing a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we still intend to keep using them because they're so, you know, from oh, a customer really? experience perspective, yeah. they're so much better than those other ones. But we have lost it. I think it's actually stabilised a bit to where it was initially. <laughs> <laughs> just, and, just on the yeah. AOTA refurbishment, the feedback uh, certainly that uh, I and other board members have, re have received is universally positive, but for one thing, and that is um, can we please get it finished? <laughs> Do you want to repeat that, Jeff? I think some people, including myself, didn't quite hear you. Just, just the internal refurbishment is still in a state of flux in some respects. It's coming together really, really well, but there's a way to go, and we just need to get it finished. Just on, sorry, uh, Ted, before we go to Councillor Darby, when does the extension start at the back for where the APO and others go? So we're... 
been doing some work on a, um, a master plan for the precinct, including in, including that, which we've been working with the design Auckland Design Office on. Um, we would probably be looking to sort of bring that into the council process over the next year. We haven't got any funding for it at the moment, so yep. but that's that's sort of the time frame frame that we're looking at. Um, we've been working through uh, with some architects on preliminary design and costs and that at the moment, but. It, from my perspective, it, it's, it will be a really exciting project if we can get that together. So that would be an LTP discussion? Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, Councillor Darby, to wrap up the day. Thank you. There was a slide there where you compared with your Australasian... Um, <clears throat> that bottom right one there. Um, I'm familiar with uh, when the New South Wales state was looking at either demolishing some stadiums or rebuilding... I, I became aware of their full stadium um, format use was only about <clears throat> 30 to Linda. maybe late 30s out of 365 days of the year. And you've got 28 there average. But I just want to check that 183 number. That doesn't include... Is that is that full stadium format? I, I'd be surprised. Is it like for like? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it like for like? Is that one eight three number equal to the activities that are represented in that twenty eight number? No, no, it's not like for like. And when I was speaking to that icon, uh, councillor, I tried to make the point that the one eighty three includes everything from full stadium use okay. through to community level school use of, uh, of the fields there. It's simply a reflection of the fact that these venues, uh, particularly Mount Smart, yeah, they get worked very, very hard compared with the ones that we see in Australasia of comparable size. Okay. Thanks for the Just <clears throat> one of the um, parts of your report intrigued me. Um, the target was uh, 18 and we're already at an actual of 45. I gather that's the hirers, the, the major hirers, and how they see RFA and the venues and, you know, how good to operate and um, be hosted, etc. I'm reading that and I'm thinking, well, that's an extraordinary high score. That's uh, something that you should be feeling pretty good about. Just, yeah. I, I'm just... Yeah, and counts. Did, did, did that score zoom up because the target looks, therefore, low? Did, or have you just had a very strong response from um, the promoter sector? And, and Council, we, we regularly sort of check that now after events. So some of it's from uh, promoters and hirers, and also some of it's from customers as well. Um, that uh, we, we generally try and get a, a, a review after events and uh, basically get information now on a monthly basis of, of our NPS scores. So, yeah, it is, the score's high, it's really, it's good. I guess to me the important thing is the trend, to just to see how we keep it and keep it moving. Um, in, in some areas, you know, some of the venues, we will get a negative score sometimes, just because of some of the, the activity, if we get a wet event, something like that, the sort of lack of rain cover, so it's, we just look at it quite uh, particularly after we, every time we go through that. Okay. Look, lastly, you, it's good to see your response to, you know, your climate response and reducing your carbon footprint and addressing sustainability. Can I just check off with you here? So we do know that, um, and this is no criticism, this is supporting what you're doing, but I'm just aware that the one way, one single way you can really make a big impact in a city is to reduce your carbon footprint through your transportation choices. And when I go to your website, your convention's website, if I look at a number of your venues, one of the first things it says is things like great parking, plenty of parking, free parking. And I'm not sure whether you're aware of that, but it doesn't land me on, for the cloud, for example, the cloud and Shed 10, it says close to motorway. That's the first thing it says about transportation. And for me, I would be saying it's right next to the city, right, well, the Britomart train station, the city rail link, a ferry service, as you well know, yeah. Jeff, etc. So I'm just wondering if, if there's an opportunity to actually start telling our customers how to get to these wonderful venues in the most sustainable way at the outset, rather than selling the 1950s to 1990s drive and park solution. That, that's, uh, that's a good point to raise. I, I suppose the only observation I would make is that when you're talking a moment ago about our net promoter score, 
one of the big things that boosts the net promoter score is for people to know that they can get parking easily. If, you, if, they, have a if they have trouble with parking uh, at an event, that will track directly into a negative movement on NPS. Parking doesn't go away though. I'm not saying you, don't, you take the car parking away. I'm saying what you promote, what you show to your customer. Oh, I, do, I, I take the point. I take the point. Could be the second point instead yeah. of the first. Uh, and I think, Councillor, I mean, the other thing we're seeing now, particularly around the, the stadiums with concerts and that sort of thing, is the amount of people who now go by train and that sort of thing compared to the cars previously. We've got an incredible shift onto trains and that. And one last thing, on that site, under your venues, Western Springs is entirely missing from the list. Mm. It may be requiring some... <laughs> OK. Right, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Um, anyway, that's all good, and that was um, uh, your best presentation. And I will say what's on the screen there is um, should keep a number of people um, less dissatisfied. Thank you. Right, we, there was no extraordinary business, uh, which we noted before, and the meeting is closed. All in favour.